Okay, this is going to be a fairly easy story to write. If you missed our in-class review session, then you can go ahead and listen and I'll fill you in on some of what we talked about. So the first thing you always want to do, remember, is to read and find out what happened. That's the question you're going to ask yourself. What happened? Where was it? When was it? Um, who was involved? Who are your who's? Um, anything unusual about it that you don't want to forget about. Remember the story that we did about our driver who ran into the back of a pickup truck while she was talking to her car insurance company, right? So there's so many unusual things that happen in life uh, that makes it part of a story. That's a news value, something that is unusual. So if you read the story, you're going to find out that the whole thing is unusual, a raccoon fell through the ceiling and into the dining area at the 459 dining hall, right? That happened Friday. So um, we're going to, we know the when, we know the where. Um, we have some space, right? So you can add some details if you want to. Um, maybe as students looked on, you know, now remember, don't start your lead with an intro. If you use that, you want to put that um, somewhere else in Lee, but you've got 30 to 35 words, and so nobody was hurt, everybody was good, so you can have a little bit of fun with this lead. Um, now, a couple things to point out. Here's the name of the dining hall. We're going to capitalize all of this. I would say the LSU 459 dining hall, and the reason I would say that is um, a lot of you, that's a familiar area, but you've got people who attend LSU who don't know what this is. And so the larger community is not going to know what it is either. So you want to put LSU 459 Dining Hall. Just go ahead and clearly identify the area. Now you have, you have several who's, right? The most obvious, again, is the raccoon. Uh, you've got students who are... Um, trapped the raccoon, raccoon who watched all this happen. There was lots of screaming and running and all of that. You had a cook who tried to catch the raccoon. Baton Rouge Animal Control eventually caught the raccoon um, in, in a trash can, right? And so honestly, your lead can also give us the ultimate, what ultimately happened. Uh, the raccoon is still not roaming the 459 dining hall. So when you write inverted pyramid about something, that had a, an um, ultimate conclusion, that's a good place to land in your lead. What eventually happened? Uh, but you can, so you've got ways to start. I mean, I would probably, um, raccoon is so unusual, I don't know if I'd start with anything else, but you may try, that's fine with me. Now, one thing I realized in here too, is you're gonna have to fix my mistakes, okay? So um, raccoon, I spelled multiple ways. And I, I have to be honest, I, I didn't do that on purpose. So your job is to make sure you spell raccoon correctly. For some reason, spell check is not catching it. I'm not sure why, but there are not multiple ways to spell uh, the word raccoon, all right? Baton Rouge Animal, Animal Control, that's the name of the organization. You're going to capitalize all of that. Now let me show you one thing, too. So we're going to use everything in here. Um, this is a quote from someone who was in the 459. And the way I have it written here is actually the way you're going to use it. So I've, I've done this before for you. Um, you're going to attribute it after the first sentence. So the punctuation is correct. So your intro quote, comma, close quote, your attribution, period. That's the official end of that first sentence. Then I'm going to pick up with my quotes again and do the next few sentences, period, close quote. I can take this whole thing and copy and paste it into my story. Now, what you don't want to do is make partial quotes out of this. This is a really good quote from someone who was there. It tells me what she thought. It tells me how she felt. It tells me her emotions. So I'm not going to change anything. That's like a really good video interview. I wouldn't break that up into pieces either. I would use the whole thing. So go ahead and use the whole thing. Now, the only thing that I will say is a good quote 
should not come any sooner than your third paragraph. Any time from the third paragraph on is good. And the reason why is because we need the lead to tell us basically what happened. The second paragraph, remember, kind of fills in the blanks for the lead, finishes telling us what happened. Now we can enjoy the conversation. Now we can meet Joni Jones. We can um, find out what she thought, and it all makes sense. So that's why you don't put it at the top or put it in the lead, but instead you wait and tell us about the story, and then we can enjoy. Now, one thing, too, I want to show you, this is correct, too. So your major is kind of a job description, so you don't need to capitalize that either. So that's pretty much it. You want to make sure that there are no, I've got fragments and all kinds of stuff in here. You want to fix that, make complete sentences. Your paragraphs, remember, are four lines max. So here, this is not quite four lines, so you're good. You can use that um, in your story just like that. But if it were longer, we would have to do something about it. So you should be fine. This is probably going to be maybe three paragraphs, maybe four depending on how you put it together. So it's a little bit longer than what we've done, but you shouldn't have any problem at all.